Mandele Badala Dozia. What can we do without you? What can we do without you? Your presence makes the difference. It takes your presence to make the to make the difference. Hey, I need your presence, Lord. Aya dalaba zoza vrande shahaya. My God, my God, my God. I've got to play it again. I've just got to play it again. Uh, this song is uh, a naming call coming from the Ministry of Moses. Okay. Uh, I've got to play this again. I want you to pray this prayer sincerely.
senses like an army supporting me, fighting for me. Go with me, Lord. I need your presence. In the spirit of the song, I pray for someone under the sound of my voice that may the presence of God go with you wherever you go today. May the presence of God carry you through in the name of Jesus. May the presence of God see you through. I pray for you from the depth of my heart that every step you take today will be a step with God. Ah, I pray for you from the very core of my inner man that every decision you make today will be by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you, child of God, under the sound of this voice, that whatever you do, wherever you go, the Lord will go with you in the name of Jesus. As you go for the interview, may the Lord go with you. As you make this journey, may the Lord go with you. As you travel to and fro, may the Lord go with you. As you go around to ensure that there is food on the table, may the Lord go with you. I pray for you. I stand in the gap and I make prayer for someone under the sound of my voice that the presence of God will lead you through. In the mighty name of Jesus, by this prayer, I decree by divine authority that your destiny is secure. You will not miss the mark. You will not miss the mark. You will not miss the mark because the Lord is journeying with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that every step you take will be a step towards the fulfillment of your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for that single mother under the sound of my voice that the presence of the Lord will go with you. I pray for that single father under the sound of my voice that the presence of the Lord will go with you that because of the presence of the Lord you will raise these children you will raise that son you will raise that daughter and he and she will fulfill that which they are destined to fulfill in the mighty name of Jesus because the presence of God will go with you in the mighty name of Jesus I pray I make intercession from the very depth of my heart for everyone under the sound of my voice May the presence of God not be far from you. In the name of Jesus, every step you take will be with the presence of God. Every move you make will be with the presence of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, may the Lord make you a host of his presence. That wherever you go, you will carry the presence. As you walk into that office, go with the presence. As you get into that marketplace, go with the presence. As you embark on this journey called marriage, son of God, daughter of God, I pray that the presence of God will go with you on this journey called marriage. In the name of Jesus, whatever you do, let the presence of God never leave you. Let the presence of God never depart from you. Let the presence of God never be far from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, eradini wunanti, eradini wun in your going out and in your coming in may the lord go with you in the mighty name of jesus i pray the presence of god over your life i pray the presence of god in all that you do I pray the presence of God. May the presence of God go with you as you go to see the doctor today. May the presence of God go with you as you go to see the lawyer today. May the presence of God go with you as you walk into that banking hall. May the presence of God go with you in that meeting, in that meeting. May the presence of God go with you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray the presence of God with you. And as long as the presence of God is with you, you will go smiling. You will come back home smiling. You will come back home with joy in your heart. And everything will work together for your good. The lines will fall in pleasant places for you because the presence of God is with you. If you believe it, shout a loud amen wherever you are. Send it 
Joy 99.7 FM, taking you closer to heaven. Eleven minutes to the top of the hour, uh, five right here on Joy ninety nine point seven FM, your super station channel of blessing, and your place of inspiration. Remember that Joy timing his presence is brought to you by Marsha Partners Limited, and I care. Hey, 
Five minutes to the top of the hour right here on Joy 99.7 FM. Yep. We're going to be getting into uh, prayer. Mm-hmm. And then Sep- we shall be delving into the word. I want you to get your Bibles uh, ready. I want to show you something. What a Ya 
We're going to be praying that scripture. Come with me to John. Chapter 12, the verse 27 and 28. John chapter 12. Twenty-seven and the verse twenty-eight, but our major on verse twenty-eight. Our prayer will be derived from the verse twenty-eight. Are you there? The Gospel of John, twenty-seven, uh, chapter twelve. I beg your pardon. From verse twenty-seven to twenty-eight, this is Jesus speaking. He said, "Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say, Father?" Save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. And then in verse 28, he prays a prayer and says, Father, glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Then the Bible says that then came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Wow. But this time, Jesus was getting closer to destiny fulfillment. He was beginning to pick the vibes. So there were times that his soul was troubled. You see, your soul is not always troubled when you encounter a calamity or something bad happens. Sometimes the burden of destiny can trouble your soul. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to describe. Uh, the burden, the the, the the burden of the destiny you must fulfill can bring heaviness in your heart. The assignment you carry can be so heavy. That you are the deliverer of your family can lay a weight on your soul. That you are the light of many can lay a burden on your soul. Jesus began to feel that way. And the Bible says that when he came to that point, he prayed this prayer, Father, glorify your name. The day life becomes about you and the glorification of you, you missed it. It is that the Lord will be glorified in it all. Jesus bombayos de radi shawu when you minyam wa ma brabom. I know I'm destined for greatness. I know I have been brought here to save mankind, reconcile mankind unto you. But the weight of this destiny. I can't pray it away. The only thing I can do at this hour is that in the midst of this, glorify yourself. 
And I want you to pray that prayer today. Our Lord, glorify yourself in my life. Glorify yourself. Glorify. I know you have you have placed greatness in me. You have brought me here for an uncommon assignment. And 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 I, I sense it, I know it without a shadow of a doubt. But then I need you to glorify yourself. Use my life as a platform for your glorification. Use my life as, as, as a plane, as a place where you glorify yourself, where you shine. You see, the, the, the all African uh, uh, and, uh, sports games now, you see, when, when, when people win, uh, where we, uh, I'm not fully, I'm not a, a, a sports fan, you know. You see, all those who won the medals, you see that thing they stand on. You see, winning a medal is, is likened unto glorification, okay? Now, the, the only time people can acknowledge that these are the ones who have won the medals and applaud them is when they stand on those platforms wearing the medals or carrying the trophy, you understand? Now, your life is like those platforms, first, second, third, or gold, silver, bronze. You see? Uh -huh. That is how your life is. Now, God, standing on that platform, which is your life, to glorify himself amounts to you also being glorified. So at a point, Jesus, what it means is that glorify yourself through me, that, that, that through me you, you can also be glorified. I want you to pray this prayer. That Lord, glorify yourself in my life. Use my life as a platform to glorify yourself. I want you to pray this prayer sincerely. Pray it. yourself in my life, O oh God.
one time. Lord, glorify yourself in my life. Glorify yourself. The Bible says the Lord answered him and said, I have glorified my name already, but I will glorify it again. Until God is glorified in a life, that life makes no meaning. All God seeks is His glory in every facet of your life. Pray and say, Lord, glorify yourself in my life. When Pharaoh was after the children of Israel and they were stuck at the Red Sea, what did God tell Moses? He said, this day I will be glorified in this matter. <laughs> no matter what you are faced with, as long as you take this position, I can guarantee you that it will End in your favor. <laughs> my God, my <laughs> God. Glorify yourself in this matter. Hey, take the doctor's report. Take it to the altar. Place it on the altar and say that Eradi, I said my doctor, nor can you. Nemo mi show when you mean yam. Show when you mean Glorify yourself, my dear father. Somebody has got to pray this prayer and say, Lord, I don't understand what is going on. I don't seek to understand. I don't want to bombard you with questions. Why is this going on? Why, is that? Why now? Why me? Why? I, I don't need all those things. All that I want to tell you now is that through this, eh, I don't understand what is going on, but glorify yourself. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Feeling the heartbeat of the Father. Eradica, why come away, show? The mum show when you mean yamu wom. There is nothing God cannot glorify Himself through. Nothing. God can glorify Himself through the worst of situations. I'm telling you. The worst of situations. You see, remember the other time that Jesus was walking with his disciples and then they, 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 they saw a gentleman with a, a very strange case. Dumb, deaf, blind, and crippled. And they said, ah, why is his situation like that? You know, you can't see, you can't hear, you can't talk, you can't walk. What's, what's that? Then they asked Jesus, is it the sin of his father that has caused it, or is or, or is the sin of his mother that has caused it, and I, maybe it is his own sin that has caused it. Yeah. What answer did Jesus give? He said, "It is neither the sin of his father, nor the sin of his mother, nor his own sin." He said, "But that the Lord will be what glorified." Ha! Yeah. Ah. 
that the Lord will be glorified. That the Lord will be glorified. There's no situation God cannot glorify himself through. I don't know what you're facing. For one more minute, pray this prayer and say, Lord, glorify yourself. The scripture we read, Jesus wasn't in a good mood. I said, look, his soul was troubled. Yeah. He wasn't really in a good mood. But instead of asking God questions, he said, Father, glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. Oh, they said they won't sign the contract again. Don't worry. Tell the Lord to glorify himself in this matter. <laughs> and, and mean it, mean it when you pray it. Mean it. Lord, about this thing. Glorify yourself. Just glorify yourself through this. And I can guarantee you that the way God would turn things around eh? every situation, hear this from me today and take this as a, as a word from a prophet. Every situation you find yourself in eh? is, a, is a recipe for testimony. Every situation you find yourself in is an opportunity for God to cook out of that situation a testimony for you. I'm telling you, every situation, every situation. Tell the Lord, Lord, glorify yourself. <laughs> when you went to write that ACCA uh, exam the other time, no? And shut down, fat me, boy. And now you are go you're going to reset, me, boy. Don't worry. There's no need to entertain fear. I want you to go on your knees and tell the Lord that, Lord, <laughs> glorify yourself. Why? It's wrong. Glorify yourself. Uh -huh. I say you are going for that remedial classes so that you can rewrite. Oh, no worry. Just tell the Lord to, to glorify himself. As a goma. Uh -huh. Tell him to glorify himself. And I can guarantee you that the Lord will glorify himself indeed. Mm. You ready? What can someone do? But but glorify yourself. Find space in my life to glorify yourself. Find reason to glorify yourself in this matter. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we join our faith together upon this exalted altar. Myself, my brothers and sisters who are connected via various means through Facebook, through YouTube, through my joy online, those who are listening on the radio, those who are connected in whatever means, I, I, I join faith with everyone and we lift up prayer to you, dear Lord, that you will glorify your name in our lives. Mm. As you did in the case of Jesus, do in our case as well. Glorify yourself. Glorify your name 
in the mighty name of Jesus. We stand in the gap for the nation of Ghana. We're faced with all manner of challenges. But it's our sincere prayer, O oh God, that you will glorify yourself. Even as we've marked this month as Ghana month, glorify yourself in the life of Ghana. Glorify yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. This is Joy Timing, his presence right here on Joy 99.7 FM. Time for us to get into the word. Oh, speak from your heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from your heavens and the earth will hear. Because my praise is called. Let's share a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for yet another opportunity that you have blessed us with to engage your unadulterated word your word is life your word is light i pray in the name of jesus that even as we engage your word this morning you will let the life of your word and the light of your word gain expression bring us to that place where we will be transformed by your word. Touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our souls, touch our spirit, touch our bodies with the power of your word. My dear Lord, I ask that you will grant me clarity of thought and speech. Give me utterance, Holy Spirit. Let the words that come out of my mouth not just be mere air, but, but let them be anointed. I humble myself to the absolute influence of the Holy Spirit. Gain full expression through me, even as I teach and preach your word. Let every prophetic word that comes out of my mouth come through to the glory of your name in Jesus' mighty name. And every believing saint will shout aloud, Amen. Hallelujah. You want a title for my message this morning? The title of my message is Not What Men See, But What God Sees. Not What Men See, But What God Sees. You know, perception is very, very critical as far as life is concerned. Perception. Is, is crucial. And perception is very powerful. Perception can be used as a tool of influence. And if you're not careful, someone's perception could influence you so much that it becomes your perception depending on how the person expresses it to you. Do you know that you could be in one room with someone and you are very okay with the temperature of the room, but then if the person has the skill to really convince, a person can tell you that, ah, the, the place is very cold, oh. Very, very cold. Oh, so the weather is very cold. And if you're not careful, you also take your mind to it and begin to concentrate on the temperature. Eventually, the temperature that you were once very okay with, you also say after a while that, oh, I think it's cold. Mm, I think it's cold. <laughs> That's the power of perception. 
But the truth of the matter is that not all perceptions are really true. Perceptions are like opinions. They are like noses. Now, it is up to you to subscribe to whatever perception you want to subscribe to. But mind you, that what kind, whatever perception you, you log on to will determine the outcome of your life. Am I communicating? The kind of perception you log on to will determine the outcome of your life. Not what men see, but what God sees. Let's get into the scriptures. Mark chapter 1. We'll read from verse 16 to 19. Mark, the gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 1. The verse 16 to the verse 19. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. Now, when you see people in a boat casting a net into the sea, what perception do you derive? Who are they? Are they a fisherman? Hello? Eh. Hey. <laughs> That's what you've seen. They are fishermen. Now Jesus sees these people casting net into the sea. Now the writer says that for they were fishers. Verse 17. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me. I will make you to become fishers of men. Verse 18. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James and John of Zebedee uh, and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. Let's end there. What did Jesus see in them? He did not see fishermen. He saw soul winners. <laughs> he, did not see, he did not see laborers. He saw world changers. The writer says that I, these guys were in the boat and they were casting their nets. Why? Because that who they are. Is fishermen. But Jesus saw otherwise. Jesus saw fishes of men. He saw people who could draw men and not necessarily fish from the sea. And eventually, that is what he turned them into, who they really are, fishes of men. The crust of my message this morning is that Jesus sees greatness in you. It's not about what men see. It's not about what men see. It's about what God sees in you. I came to announce to you that what God sees in you is a mighty man. What God sees in you is a mighty woman. What God sees in that child that you are calling troublesome, 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 troublesome. It's not a troublesome individual. What God sees is a great leader who will influence his generation, who will influence her generation. Huh. What men see in that daughter of yours is a casapolio penisem. A kokwana noasem. And, 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 and you are beginning to buy that idea that your daughter, stop it. What is in that child is not in Peninsem. 
What is in that child is greatness. What is in that child is a sense of maturity. What is in that child is wisdom. All that is required is guidance. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But I want you to shift your attention from what men see to what God sees. It's not what men see. It is what God sees. Ah, what would you say if you met Saul, who is also Paul? A killer. A controversial guy. But Jesus saw a great apostle and brought out, called out that apostle out of him. Oh, yes. What the society saw in Mary Magdalene is a demon-infested woman whose life was surrounded with controversy. About the other who born or Bev Kako Fasema Mouse, this lady. That was Mary Magdalene. But what did Jesus see? Jesus saw a precious gift. Jesus saw a sweet soul. Jesus saw a woman who could be used as a vessel to turn the world around. That woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. What did society see? What society saw was a spoilt, a spoilt woman who, who does not stick to her husband, who uh, 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 is, 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 is cheating. And they said, what does she deserve? She, she must be stoned. What did Jesus see? Jesus saw a saint in that sinner. Ah! Jesus saw a saint in a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. Mm. It is up to you to decide which perception you will subscribe to. Oh, yes. It's up to you to decide. A story is told of a great man. Is it Thomas Edison? I think so. Who wasn't doing well in class? Wasn't really doing well in class. And the teacher called the mom and said, you know this, your boy, he has an issue. He can't learn. He's, not, he's below the class. You, uh, the advice I'll give you is that don't worry him. Let's uh, withdraw him from school because he's unable to match up. And the mother didn't give up. In that boy that the teacher said will amount to nothing was an inventor. Was an intelligent inventor. Trapped in that boy. Whose perception do you subscribe to? Daughter of God. Whose perception do you subscribe to? Son of God. What the world saw in these guys were fishermen. But what Jesus saw was soul winners. Let me show you something in Acts chapter 4, the verse 13, and then I'll wrap up for today. Acts chapter 4 and the verse 13. Concerning these same guys, see what the Bible says. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceive that they were unlearned and ignorant men. You see their perception. <laughs> unlearned, ignorant. Oh, we mude no munim. By the way, Peter was not a useless man. Oh. I went to Peter's house. Charlie, or Bobra. If you see the house, Peter, but no wonder Jesus used to live in that house. Big compound. It's just by the shore. Big compound. Plenty rooms. Of Bobra. But you see, people had their, a certain kind of perception about him. 
unlearned, ignorant. That's what they were thinking. He said, when they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant, they marveled. Why were they marveling? He said, they took knowledge of them that they had been with who? Jesus. It's the reason why I've titled my message, Not What Men See, But What God Sees. I want to announce to you, child of God, that God sees greatness in you. Begin to see what God sees. Begin to see through the lens of Jesus. When you look at your life, eh, look through the lens of Jesus. Hmm. You're saying, hey, pastor, me. Hmm. No, don't talk like that. Don't see yourself in that light. You are precious. There is glory upon your life. There is great grace upon your life. Your life is filled with beauty. Yeah. I used to have a mate who... <laughs> I don't know where he is now. You know, he had a problem with people who could solve an infusion of numbers and letters. You know, how do you use it? Is it algebra? 2A plus 3B minus uh, X is equal to Y. Find X and, and I solve. He, he always had a problem with that. I said, how? how? How are you able to mix a, a numbers and, and, and letters? And how are you able to do that? And there was a certain expression that was always on his mouth. Skunu <laughs> He used to say that a lot of time. And he never understood this thing. Because in his mind, his perception was that he is not the kind of person who can understand such kind of mathematics. That you, are, you pick numbers and letters and, and you mix them together and solve. How? No, it's for a certain kind of brains, not my own. That was his mentality. So he kept saying it. School needs it. Ye mu be be jamu. School needs it. Ye mu be be jamu. No. Abra bo ne wamba be jo bio. Uso ba be bo de. Don't see your life in the light of negative people and their perception. See your life. In, in the light of God's perception. And that is who you truly are. This morning, I have been sent with this message to let you know how God sees you. He sees you as the salt of the earth. He sees you as the light of the world. God bless you. Dive into a new era of news consumption with MyJoyOnline.com, your go-to destination for cutting-edge journalism, giving you the most credible stories from business to politics and from sports to entertainment. MyJoyOnline.com introduces an upgraded news website meticulously designed to empower you with an enriched browsing experience like never before. Experience the future of news browsing with MyJoyOnline.com. Joy 99.7 FM.
All right. Good morning, Pastor. Thank you for the word. God richly bless you. Kate Aqua. God bless you too, Kate. God bless you, Pasato. Hey, Galek Ibuatik says so. God bless you too. My mother told me a joke. It was her grandmother or so, her grandfather, who used to say that. Don't show him respect. He tells you that. Bukroma. He be useless. I'm muko mukroma. We be hopeless. I don't know what he thought the hopeless meant. But you are somebody. You see yourself in that light. Okay. Pastor, you've really encouraged me. God bless you. My name is Anthony Owusu Mensah. God bless you, Anthony. A happy 11th birthday to Angela Senam Shoda. Angela, grow in the fear of the Lord. Fulfill destiny in Jesus' name. A double celebration. A happy birthday. To my dear mom, Sylvia Ankara Wayek, and to my husband, Henry Ato Okai of GNPC. It's my prayer that God will glorify himself in their lives now and forever. In Jesus' name, lots of love from Majo and the kids. Oh, I know who I am. A very happy birthday. I I am holy. I am to Madame Angelina Apia. You turn 70 today. Or oh, Elizabeth Apia, rather. Oh, Atema. You turn 70 years today. A very happy birthday to you. The Lord favor you and grant you great grace. It's from your family and all your loved ones. They wish you well. They pray the best of life for you. Live in good health in strength and vitality in Jesus' name. Happy glorious 70th birthday to Mrs. Leonora Mark Hansen of Ekomok Hacho. It's from Mrs. Agnes uh, CRB of Ascension Methodist Hacho. The Lord bless your new age and grant you great grace in Jesus' name. God says, this is really an eye-opener. God bless you. God bless you too. It's your birthday, MFA Amo. A very happy birthday to you. The Lord bless you, MFA, and grant you great grace in Jesus' mighty name. Now, belated blessed birthday to my lovely ladies, Jifa Esmeralda Che and Dokas Fafali Mankata, wishing you both long life in good health and uh, may God cover you. Stay blessed. It's from Edinam Kofi. And a happy birthday to Isaac Osei and Gladys Amiel Pipra, uh, both of ARB Apex Bank, head office. It's from Alex Kwisiwa, managing director of ARB Apex Bank, and all your colleagues. They wish you well. They pray the best for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. All right. Now, Theodore Tichy Ministries presents family time in his presence. The theme is Open Doors. It's happening on the 6th of April, Saturday, the 6th of April, from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. with Prophet Theodore Tichy. 
at Osu Ebenezer Presby uh, Church Hall. Be there and be blessed. Now this coming Saturday, I want you to join us. Uh, this coming Friday, I want you to join us for prayer thorn at the GDCC Church Auditorium off the Adenta Dodowa Road at Amra here. That's the 29th. It's Friday, Good Friday. We are engaging the force of prayer, breaking the seals. Removing the veils, lifting barriers, and entering our next level. Every level of your life demands a certain price you must pay. And it's time to move to the next level. Come, let's put this flesh to subjection. And ride on the wings of prayer. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 12 hours of prayer. You can drive through. Spend time praying. To move to your next level. The theme. is in Luke 24, 49. It says, until you are endued with power from on high. God bless you as you come. For more information, call 050-551-8338. Fazatu, please, I want to sow a seed in line with the scripture and the song of Pastor Joe Beecher. Okay. So, 055. Three nine eight six four five zero. Okay, zero five five three nine eight six four five zero. That's the number to uh, do so. I pray that your harvest will not elude you. In Jesus' name, Amen. A very good morning to you, Mr. Jemfi Boating and Uncle Delali. God richly bless you. That's where we draw down the curtains as far as today's edition is concerned. Joy Time in His Presence has been brought to you by Amasha Partners Limited and I Care. For all your eye care services, look no further. Amasha has got it all. Many thanks to producer numero uno, uh, Mikhail Nai. God richly bless you. We meet again, same time, same place tomorrow. Rhapsody of Reality is up next. Rhapsody of Reality Welcome to today's Rhapsody reading, Tuesday 26th. Pastor says, the core of the Christian faith. Colossians chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 says, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christianity in its essence can be encapsulated in our underlined words in the opening scripture, Christ in you. The revelation that Christ resides within you forms the core of the Christian faith. This divine union and interconnectedness between us and God is described by the Lord Jesus in his prayer to the Father in John 17, verse 23. He said, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. It also brings to mind what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5.19, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed to us the word of reconciliation. Think about that. God was in Christ, and now Christ is in you, 
That means God is in you. This is amazing. Furthermore, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's in Romans 3.23. The glory of God being referred to here is the presence of God, man lifting God in his presence. God's presence was his light. That connection, that relationship was the glory. Then because of sin, man was cut off from that glory. But today in Christ Jesus, that glory that was lost in Romans 3.23 has been regained according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. The beautiful thing is that presence is not just around you. It's in you now. It's not just a voice walking in the garden as in the book of Genesis. That voice is now in you. Now we can rejoice because it's not Christ around you, amongst you, or with you but Christ in you. When you received Christ, the glory came into your life. Your life is severed from shame, reproach, sickness, disease, failure, and poverty because Christ is in you. Hallelujah. Repeat this confession. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Therefore, glory, wholeness, health, Preservation and prosperity are guaranteed in my life because Christ has come to live in the very cortex of my heart, making every fiber of my being, every bone of my body, and every cell of my blood inundated with his presence. Hallelujah. For further study, read 1 Corinthians 6, 19. 1 John 4, 4, and Romans 8, verse 10. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, please repeat this after me. O Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me, and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. From this day, through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah. This broadcast was brought to you by Christ Embassy. If you were blessed by this broadcast, please contact us on 244 211 0244-211-623. God bless you. Can you hear it? The freedom in our songs, the sound of liberty that rings from Kaswa to Karaga, from Tamale to Takrade. It's in the pestles that pound from coast to coast. It's in the busy offices, the crowded streets, and the noisy schools. It's in the wisdom of our elders and in the laughter of our children. It's in seeing how far we've come and looking at how much we can grow. It's in knowing that still Ghana go be. Happy 67th Independence 